Welcome. After learning about some of the processes which are used to remove the impurities from the natural gas, uh, in this lecture we shall be learning some fundamentals about the processes like absorption and stripping which are used for uh, some of this processing of the natural gas. So, this lecture concerns on the fundamentals of absorption and stripping for natural gas processing and in this we shall be learning about absorption and stripping, the so, packed column in which such kind of processes are done and the how to find out the height of the packing which is a part of the design of the packed columns. <coughs> now, let us first see what is absorption. Absorption means to remove one or more species which are called solute from a gaseous or vapor stream using some liquid and the liquid is called the solvent. So, in this uh, absorption what we have that one the species which have to be absorbed will be carried in a gas stream and it is assumed that the gas stream contains other components which are unabsorbed or insoluble in the liquid and that is why the rest of the gas other than the species which is or are getting absorbed is called the carrier gas. So, carrier gas carries the various species which need to be separated by absorption. There are several examples of absorption processes which we have already seen. For example, sweetening of natural gas in this we can say the solute is carbon dioxide and H 2 S, the solvent is some kind of amine and the carrier gas is natural gas that is we are assuming that other than carbon dioxide and H 2 S no other component is getting dissolved or absorbed by the solvent. Then we have the dehydration of natural gas, and removal of nitrogen from natural gas, then removal of some trace components of natural gas and there are many other processes which involve the absorption. The absorption may be physical or chemical and we shall be concerned in this particular lecture only on the chemical absorption that means, we shall not be considering any reaction, but whatever we are learning they can be easily extended for chemically reacting species too. And these absorption may be carried out in pet columns like tray tower, spray tower, venture scrubber, etcetera. Stripping is the re reverse process of absorption. In this case, the one or more species, again the solute, is removed from a liquid to a gaseous or vapor stream. So, in this, this kind of stripping is done to recover the absorbed solute or to regenerate the solvent. An example is which we have seen that when we are absorbing carbon dioxide in amine, so to regenerate the amine and to recover the carbon dioxide, we use the stripping and the agent with which it is done is the hot steam. And this again may be carried out in some packed column, tray tower, spray tower, etcetera. Now, we see what are the desirable properties of the solvent. The first is the solubility. Now, the solubility of the solvent has to be high towards the desired species to be separated and that means, it should be there are many many species may get absorbed, but it should have highest solubility towards the desired species that means, should be it should be selective. Then it should have very low volatility because if it is very volatile it will be evaporating easily and it will be going along with the carrier gas that will be re resulting in the loss of the solvent. So, we want low, low volatility of the solvent, then it should be having low enough viscosity because high viscosity would mean the cost of its pumping will be high. It should not be very corrosive because if it is very corrosive, it will be difficult to maintain and the materials which are coming in touch with the solvent will get corroded easily and it should be costing low, it should be cheap and it should not pose any kind of hazard due to flammability, toxicity and to the environment. So, these are some of the properties based on which we select the solvent and there would be some kind of trade off among these properties. Now, here comes the uh, typical absorption problem in a packed bed. So, let us see that what happens if we change the solvent flow rate. This particular equation we have seen earlier in the multi stage process only difference is this in this case 
the L phase which we called earlier the lighter phase is now uh, heavier phase is now call is the liquid phase whereas the V phase which was earlier the lighter phase is the vapor phase. So, L is the liquid and V is the vapor and the nomenclatures are uh, uh, there which we learnt earlier in the multi state processes and this is the overall material balance for the whole set of here we have taken the whole column as our control volume and what we find that the flow rate of impure gas that is V s the inlet and outlet concentrations of the impure gases that is y 1 and y 2 this y 1 y 2 V s are generally and the x 2 that is that the inlet concentration of the uh, lean solvent is are given. So, we know this we know this and this desired how much that means y 1 y 2 means how much uh, species have to be separated that is to be prescribed uh, by the user and the amount that is throughput of the particular vapor stream from which we need to absorb will also be specified. So, these are all known. So, y 1, y 2, v s and x 2 are known. So, only unknowns are l s and x y. So, we see that if we decrease the value of the l s what happens we find that x 1 increases from this equation x 1 increases with an decrease in the value of the l s. Now, that means if I look from the point of view of the operating line what we find that we decrease in the L s x 1 increases. So, that operating line tilts toward the equilibrium curve and the driving force for mass transfer reduces thereby increasing the column length packing requirement and ensuing capital cost. So, this can be easily seen from this particular figure that if we keep decreasing the L s we find that this, this, this operating line this is the equilibrium curve this operating line shifts towards the equilibrium curve and that means, the difference between these two concentrations on the operating line and the equilibrium curve that is the driving force that keeps decreasing and the if the driving force decreases we with the size of the column for a given separation will also tend to increase and ultimately what we will find this operating line touches the equilibrium, equilibrium line. So, here we have kept the y 1 constant. So, we find that ultimately it touches the equilibrium curve and when it touches it we call that this particular thing we call is a pinch point. So, at the pinch point what we find that uh, that this particular at this pinch point we find that uh, this has been wrongly shown in this figure this is not the curve this particular point is a pinch point. So, at this pinch point we find that there will not be any more separation possible because there is no driving force, but whatever is the maximum uh, concentration is reached this is the x 1 max that means, we can go only up to this much separation and for this particular uh, this much concentration that is the maximum concentration of the particular solute in the solvent that is the x 1 max. So, we can find out from the uh, mass balance equation the minimum value of the liquid uh, liquid this is the again solute free basis. So, this is found that we are finding this value and this y 1 by alpha alpha is the equilibrium constant y 1 is this value. So, this x 1 max is equal to y 1 by alpha. So, this x 1 max has been taken as y 1 by alpha. So, this is the value of the minimum liquid flow rate. So, actual solvent flow rate should be about 1.2 to about 2 times the minimum flow rate is the general convention. Now, similar analysis can be done on the stripping also uh, in this case the process is reversed that means, we are trying to take the solute from the liquid back to the vapor and this vapor is as I said may be some kind of steam in case of amines which are used for the absorption of the carbon dioxide and H 2 S. Now, again we write this same equation in this case what we find that now the liquid flow rate that is the solvent flow rate will be given to us and so will be the outlet and inlet composition of the solvent because this inlet composition corresponds to the so, uh, to the rich solvent um, flow rate and x 1 is that after taking out the solute from the solvent what is the amount remaining in the uh, solvent and in this case we find that the inlet concentration of gas will be also given to us with which we are doing the stripping and we have to find out the outlet concentration of the gas and the V s. 
So, here also we find that if we decrease the value of V s that is the uh, vapor flow rate, then we find that Y 2 increases. So, that again operating line tilts towards the equilibrium curve. So, here we can again see from this particular um, thing that here our x 2 is given constant and these are the operating lines and as we know in this case for the stripping the operating line will be lying below the equilibrium curve. So, what we find if we draw various operating lines on which are meeting at this particular x 2 value we find when ultimately the operating line which touches the equilibrium point that is the pinch point and corresponding to that whatever value maximum value of the y 2 we find. So, this is the maximum possible uh, separation possible by the particular vapor stream and naturally we cannot in neither in case of uh, stripping or case of absorption we can cross this equilibrium curve because crossing means there will be reverse uh, reverse mass transfer that means it will not be any more stripping it will be again absorption. So, we cannot cross this we have to stop here. So, in this case also we can find out the value of the minimum vapor flow rate from this equation in this case this y 2 is nothing but the alpha into x 2 and similarly in this case also the actual gas flow rate may be taken 1 to 1.2 to 2 times the minimum gas flow rate. Now, let us see that what is the way to carry out this absorption generally this absorption or stripping is carried out in kind some kind of plate or packing uh, tower and the plate type involves that discrete gas liquid contact over the plates or the trays whereas, in, kind of, in case of packed column we find that, that there is a continuous contact between the gas and the liquid as these two phases flow in the column. Now, here we are uh, have the design basis in this design of the packed absorption column tower what we generally do that it involves determination of the height and diameter of the tower for a given set of solvent packing solvent and gas flow rates. So, given some kind of packing some kind of solvent and some flow rates of the solvent and the gas we need to know the height and diameter of the tower and performance is generally reported in terms of height of transfer unit which uh, we shall be looking into later and this height of transfer unit is generally supplied by the manufacturer of the packing. Then to find out this to do the uh, design of the pack tower we need to know the equilibrium behavior the flow rates and compositions of the gas and liquid at the two terminals that is top and bottom and the individual or overall mass transfer coefficients. These mass transfer coefficients are analogous to the heat transfer coefficients which are used for the designing of the heat exchangers. So, let us now see the two film theory of absorption in this what we say that there is an interface which is the imaginary line of separation between the two phases which is represented here by a black straight line and this, this particular interface on both the sides of the interface there are two fictitious films on the gas side we have a film in this particular film we assume that the the total resistance to the mass transfer in the gaseous phase is confined that is outside the film there is no resistance to the mass transfer. Similarly, on the liquid side also we have a fictitious film within this film the total resistance to mass transfer is confined and outside this film there is no resistance to the mass transfer. And what happens that due to there is no resistance so the bulk concentration remains same throughout the uh, gas side up to the film and then on the same thing happens on the liquid side also that the concentration of the particular solute remains same throughout the bulk up to the film. But within the film due to resistance to mass transfer there is a fall in the particular concentration uh, of the particular solute and when it is absorption the solute is coming from the vapor side or gas side to the liquid side. So, that the bulk concentration in the gas is more than the concentration we find at the interface and once it comes to interface it attains a concentration of y i and after y i there is we assume that the interface is always at equilibrium. So, that there will be a corresponding um, concentration of the solute for the uh, liquid side. So, x i represents a corresponding uh, concentration of the solute in equilibrium with y i and this from x i again the, the concentration falls 
up within the film due to the resistance in the film and attains the value of the bulk concentration. So, this is how we take the two film theory uh, for the absorption. This, this film theory is an assumption, but it um, simplifies the analysis of the absorption problem and the uh, rate of absorption is given like this that in this n is the mass flux and a is the specific surface area of the packing this is equal to this k y a y minus y i that is from this to this uh, from this y to y i and this is k y is the uh, uh, mass transfer coefficient in the gaseous side and the resistance to this is reciprocal of this k y and this is also given in terms of some overall uh, k y overall gas side coefficient that it is similar to the overall heat transfer coefficient and now in this case we have y minus y star. Now, y star is shown here this y star is the value of the gas side concentration in equilibrium with the bulk uh, solute concentration. Now, this whole thing can be put in this graphically here. Now, here we find that for if we consider a binary system, we can put on this kind of a graph. Here we see that on this x axis, we are plotting the liquid side mole fraction. On the y axis, we are plotting the vapor side or gas side mole fraction. And here, let us assume this is the equilibrium curve. And here, let us assume this is the operating line. So, at any given point on the operating line, we have the value of x and we have the value of y corresponding to this x and this y. And then, this because this x i y i are in equilibrium, so this x i y i will be somewhere on the equilibrium curve. And how to find out this without going to detail of the theory, what we do that from this point of x y, we draw a line with a slope of minus k y a by k x a up to the equilibrium curve. So, wherever this line with this, this slope touches the equilibrium curve, from there we find out the value of the x i and y i. And this y star is in equilibrium with x. So, what we do from x we draw up to the equilibrium curve and whatever is the value of the y here that is the y star. Similarly, in case of the gas side we have some x star which is in equilibrium with the bulk value of the y and here similar to what we do this y value we extend up to the equilibrium curve and correspondingly we find the value of the x star from the equilibrium curve. So, that is how we locate all the values x, x i, x star and y, y i, y star. So, in this case we are putting the uh, mass rate in terms of this difference y and y i and y and y star. So, depending on which is the driving, which driving force we are using whether it is y minus y i or y minus y star, we shall be having different types of the coefficients. The similar film theory may be used for the stripping also. Now, in this case the situation is reversed. In this case we have the liquid side here, gas side here. Again we see that the, this is the bulk concentration of solute in the liquid which is remaining same up to the film and then falling within the liquid film and then it there is a corresponding value of the y i uh, in at the interface which is again falling within the film and going to the bulk concentration and again we have this x star and y star. But in this case when we represent graphically we find this is the equilibrium curve this is the operating line and similar to what we learnt earlier we, uh, we first figure out x y and we draw a line with the slope of minus k y a by k x a wherever it touches this equilibrium curve from there we can read the value of the x i and y i and if we extend this line up to the equilibrium curve we get the value of y star and if we extend this value from y to equilibrium curve we get the value of the x star. So, here we find that we can from this particular uh, graph we can locate the value of the various concentrations and here is the stripping rate that this is in given in terms of x minus x i for if it is x minus x i then we are using k x the uh, liquid film mass transfer coefficient. If we are using x minus x star then we are using the overall mass transfer coefficient based on the liquid side. Now, to find the height of the packing again without any derivation we are seeing the formula to be used that 
whether we can put in terms of H T U G into N T U G, we shall be looking into their expressions bit later or in terms of H T U O G and into N T U O G. And similarly, we can also best in terms of the liquid size H T U L, N T U L and H T U O L and N T U O L. So, this H T U is the height of transfer unit, N is the number of transfer units. So, height of transfer unit it signifies the difficulty of separation by a given packing that dictates the interfacial area and under a given set of operating conditions mainly the uh, flow rates of the uh, two phases. The more the difficulty in separation the higher the value of the H T U and so will be the taller the column. Similarly, in case of N T U this is the number of transfer units and this signifies the difficulty of the separation due to approach to equilibrium and the extent of separation required. So, this N T U depends on the equilibrium relationship with and the bulk concentration whereas, H T U depends on the type of the packing. And the more the approach to equilibrium that is the less the driving force the more will be the N T U and the more the N T U that is the taller the column. Now, again without derivation these are the various expressions for the N T U and H T U we shall not be going to der these derivations okay? and we shall be looking into a uh, the simpler version of these ones. So, these are the simple version of this we find that these are the ways we can find out the H T U N T U from here this is the overall gas side um, uh, um, uh, H T U this is the with the individual uh, H T U s. Similarly, based on the liquid side also we can find out these equations and here we have this y 1 minus y these are kind of um, some uh, uh, some these are some kind of the driving forces. So, here we find that these are the expressions for the H 2 and N 2 G and H 2 O G and N 2 O G. Here we find that the V represents the molar flux of the gas and K y K K y and this capital K y the local and overall gas side mass transfer coefficient, y i is the interfacial solute concentration, y star is the gas phase solute mole fraction in the equilibrium with the bulk phase liquid mole fraction x and is the specific interfacial area. All these things we have already seen in the in graphical representation and these are the expressions for the N T U. So, what we find here that H T U decreases with an increase in the mass transfer coefficient with an increase in the specific surface area and with an increase in the uh, with a uh, decrease in the flow rate. So, all these things are to be seen to find out the value of H T U and we have to always try to minimize the H T U that the less the H T U the more effective is the packing. But in case of N T U we find that this basically depends on the approach to equilibrium between the bulk concentration and the interfacial concentration and the how much separation is needed. So, this 1 minus y i m that is given by this logarithmic uh, concentration difference and this y 1 minus y star m which is used here is given by this particular expression. So, these are re representing the logarithmic mean driving force as it is similar to analogous to the L m T d which we use in the heat transfer. Now, this is on the liquid side these are analogous to the H 2 N 2 expressions for the gas side here we replace all the mass transfer coefficients uh, or for the gas side with respect to the liquid side mass transfer coefficients. So, I will not be going into the detail of these expressions. Ultimately, we can also see that this is the way we can uh, correlate the overall mass transfer coefficients on the gas side and the liquid side with the individual gas side and liquid side mass transfer coefficients. In this case we have this value of alpha that is the equilibrium constant and based on this we can have these expressions to correlate the overall H T U with the individual H T U on the gas and the liquid side and this is the overall H T U based on the liquid side again this is given in terms of the individual gas side and the liquid side H T U s. If the concentration of the solute is low then we find that these logarithmic mean uh, concentration concentrations with respect to the interfacial and the bulk are almost the same. So, that these values uh, these ratios become 1. So, in this case we can reduce these expressions for the overall H T U like this and in this case we have this 
A that is the ab absorption factor which is given by the ratio of L prime by alpha V prime and this alpha and this is the absorption factor and this 1 minus A over bar is the stripping factor. So, this is how we find out the overall S2 and N S2 values from the individual S2 values which are again used for the determination of the uh, height of the packing. And these are the references from which you can learn more about the derivations and detail about these theories. Thank you.